بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين This episode is an English episode an extension to our Smashing Noise Channel 19 episode number 30 English Virgin Today's date is October 8, 2020 And as you can see, we mark down the amount of months left for the existence of what is called Israel. 19 months for that regime to be gone from the planet Earth, inshallah. Bimashiatillah. Please allow me two minutes, or one minute, exactly to apologize to our Arabic read readers about today's episode, which was supposed to be Arabox episode, talking about the Turkish lira and the uh, Egyptian pound. We will postpone this to another day, okay? Because this is more important topic we have to talk about. Because I forgot that last night was the vice presidential debate. Just give me one second, please. أعزائي المتابعين العرب أسف على حلقة اليوم إنه في آخر لحظة غيرتها إلى نتحدث عن تحليل المناظرة ما بين Vice President Mike Pence were the candidate Vice President on the ticket the Democrat Senator Kamala Harris and we will end the topic that you had in the past that it will be the episode today the regular episode from Arabax للتحدث عن موضوع الليرة التركية والجنيه المصري أيهما أقوى هذا بحط لكم الحلقة في يوم آخر إن شاء الله خلينا أرجع الآن أستعرض هذا الموضوع باللغة الإنجليزية لأنه مهم جدا لمتابعينا العرب والمسلمين الذين الذين لا يفهمون العربية أو يتكلموها ويستوعبوها بس ولكن ليس بطلاقة وهذا أمر مهم للناخب الأمريكي فهاي الحلقة موجهة لجالية العربية والإسلامية في الولايات المتحدة Back, back again This one is entitled Last night's nine round thing. You may like the 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 title. And it's the debate which went between the shaky head and the fly head, if you remember. And the question is who won the ding? Is this Chinese? Yes it is Chinese. <laughs> Because I believe China won. It's last night's debate. Okay. And now we will come to analyze it and tell you, uh, and tell you what uh, what has taken place last night and what I have observed. Okay, to begin, let me give you just some key notes about facts happened last night. The fact is the the major key note, as you notice, that uh, the uh, challenger. Senator Harris did not mention the word Israel, nor did it mention the word LGBT in last night's debate. And the obvious reason for that, because in 2016 election, they lost 13 states. Not one, not two states came into play in 2016. Not the usual ones, not Ohio, not Virginia, not Florida, 
but 13 states all concentrated in the Midwest, which came actually to play. And if you look at those states, they are heavily populated with the Muslims' vote, almost 15 million people, 15 million Muslims living throughout the United States, but most of them concentrated on those Midwest states like Ohio, Michigan, Indiana, Illinois, Wisconsin, and so on, Iowa, and all of this. And these people, the Muslims, did not go out to vote in 2016, as I told you in the first English episode, because we were backing Bernie Sanders against Hillary Clinton within the Democratic Party. But the Democratic Party made their biggest mistake by choosing Hillary Clinton over uh, Bernie Sanders. So that, that fact was obvious and this keynote was very obvious in last night's debate. While on the other side, on Vice President Mike Pence did mention that one of their accomplishments is moving the embassy to Jerusalem and reaffirmed that Jerusalem is the eternal capital of what's called Israel. So I just want, you, want to give you this keynote so you can observe it. I'm going to give you about eight or nine links, beginning with the full debate, just for easy and quick reference. The best one was audited or edited by any of the uh, uh, networks. So you will find that in the link and you will find a, uh, eight, seven, eight or nine links, additional links, which were directed to each and every issue within the debate in four or five minute segments, three minute segments, which are the, which are better for you to, to go to the issue directly. So uh, another thing I want to also mention before I start going one point after the other is the fact is what, what I have observed as a very strong and powerful punchline by any party used yesterday. The best punchline that resonated in my head throughout the debate was the punchline that Mike Pence have used against Senator Harris by telling her every time she said something he would respond by the phrase, you are entitled to your opinion, but you are not entitled to your own fact. That means the facts you are trying to say as facts, they were your own facts, but they are not facts. So that was very strong, which led and resulted actually at one, at certain segment during the debate for Harris for Senator Harris, every time she she says something, she would reiterate that this is a fact. That means this punchline has struck her and put her on the defense. So that's the observation. But there was there were about nine issues discussed last night, ranging from coronavirus and the uh, what uh, the anchor Susan Page has dubbed as uh, the super spreader of the virus for the event that they held at the Rose Garden at the White House. That She started off with that question to give Senator Harris a heads up because this is or this was supposed to be her main and major uh, forcing point against the Trump administration against Pence in the debate and she thought she scored on that so what you know what let's give it to her 
She did not score very powerfully, but let's just give her that point. She won on the coronavirus issue and the way it was handled. Even though Pence did put up a good defense against this issue, saying that they were cheated by China. So, but however, I give this one to, to Harris. From that point on, and after he started using the punchline, which I told you about, Harris was very obvious that she went, she went into the defense. Senator Harris was defensive from that point on, which made her unable to come back. So the other eight issues, I would give them summarily in favor of Mike Pence making the debate eight to one. Who won that ding? China and <laughs> Pence. <laughs> so, <laughs> and we call it the thing, okay? You know, you know who speaks like that, so it's, it's make it uh, a Chinese joke. Because China won yesterday. I'll tell you how. One of the questions, okay, the second question was about China. And the, the question was very simple. How do you consider China a friend, an adversary, or an enemy? None of them answered it. But when Pence came to answer it, Susan Hobb spoke over him. Okay, while Harris claimed that we destroyed our relationship with China and, and that resulted in 300,000 jobs lost, I don't know how did we lose that. We are trying to bring our companies back from China to, to the United States, which will increase the jobs. And she's saying, the result of that, we lost 300,000 jobs. And at, at another segment, she said 300 jobs. Maybe this is the truth, if, if we lost any. But, but uh, the, the counterclaim was, by Pence, was that we gained 450,000 jobs. So it is not 450 more jo new jobs. I would say maybe 200,000 new jobs was gained or were gained. So uh, both of them, the numbers are off, but, uh, but by bringing back the factories and putting more tariffs on the companies who resisted and stayed in China until the COVID-19 has hit, they were forced to flee totally. And whoever is following my Arabic episodes, I have given so many explanations about the situation that we actually won by increasing jobs and actually, like Pence has countered Senator Harris, he countered her that we, our relationship with them is a is good relationship, but we had to level the field. That means we had to uh, to actually uh, counter them and stop them, level the field and make and balance the trade, which will result in very improved relationship. And this is what I keep telling my Arabic viewers that our relationship with China is based on the 1996 agreement which specifically says that our relationship with them should be a very friendly relationship based on fair competition and based on non-military uh, uh, encounters and based on solving the solutions 
on a win-win situation. That's the agreement between us and China. And both sides have held it, and both sides, by dodging the question, whether it's our friend or enemy, or our adversary, okay, you can say a little bit adversary in, in the trade aspect of the relationship, which is competitive trade relationship, a good one, healthy one for both countries. So by dodging the question, that means China is our friend. Here is the real proof. Okay, there is no war. Uh, and the agreement specifically says that they will not create any wars or any nothing should raise should rise to to the level where a military confrontation will result out of it because it also specifically says as i said all the differences should be solved on win win situation that's in the agreement you can go back to it it's a 1996 agreement with china and then came came so many different issues such as the taxes pens scored on that one because he said if our tax reform is rebuilt as Joe Biden has promised to do on day one, that means all the tax advantages we have gained as middle class people we will lose. That is definitely, we will definitely lose. And 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 the, the evidence is in Senator Harris's statement twice she relied on information from what she called a reputable Wall Street surveying company. That's where her mind is and that's where the Democrats' mind is. Wall Street, Wall Street, or the 1%. So we really do not want to go back to that era. The tax reform, which cut down heavily the amount of pages that our tax code and our tax law is made of, about 16,000 pages or 12, 12 to 16,000 pages and rising during the, the democratic era, now they have been cut down to very small numbers, 500 pages, maybe 600 pages, and good tax breaks for the middle tax, for the middle uh, middle class income category, and that is a fact. And the most beneficials are the people who are making between 138,000 to 168,000 dollars a year. They benefit a lot. They pay a lot less taxes. So that's the middle class. This is the class we, we have to strengthen to keep to keep as strong as possible throughout our career our life in this union of ours. I consider the environment and the other the other uh, uh, issues both sides like if we go back to the green environment agreement of uh, Obama Biden that means more regulations right now what we are enjoying we have less regulations and less interference by the government in our own life and the government is very small. You can hardly hear about four, five, or six maximum. Six departments are operative. The rest are like almost uh, idle. We operate on five or six departments only, which is very small government. Less regulations, less taxes, 
We've been enjoying a lot of these benefits since January 21st of 2017. Now, if we go back to the to the environment, the NAFTA and all of this, more regulations on businesses, small, especially small businesses, most of which are in the middle class category. You don't really want to go back there. We don't want to go back to where the government almost sleeps in our houses. Too much regulations and then too much regulations entails also too much taxes, needless taxes. While the Democrats want to tax, 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 this guy relieved us from all sorts of taxes. He made our life simple and our tax code a lot simpler. One page, one page, tax return. It's, it's amazing. So let's keep it that way. So all of these issues, the taxes, the green uh, environment and all of this, it goes into the column of our Vice President Mike Pence. He was very calm yesterday. He was very well composed. Like He dealt Senator Harris an early blow that put her on the defense throughout the whole debate. Then comes the other important, the other important issue was the Supreme Court. Imagine this, imagine this. Right now, we are in process of hiring or filling the empty seat on the Supreme Court by Justice Barrett, which was nominated by Trump. And and the process of confirming her throughout the Senate is going. And if confirmed, will make the the uh, Supreme Court six conservatives to three liberals, which will bring back the country into the right principles of all faiths. it will bring the country back to actually be faithful to, to, to do the godly things instead of the liberal things going outside your faith and religion. It's amazing. We will, we will, we, atheism and LBGT and all that, they will be the most powerful groups which are very nominal and small. They will control our life. So we really don't want to go back. But what did Biden-Harris ticket has promised? If they win, they will come back to us and they will pack the Supreme Court. You know what pack the Supreme Court means? They will come say, you know what? We have 13 circuits, appellate circuit courts. We have the First Circuit Court of Appeals, Second Court, Ninth Court, Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. We have 12 Circuit Court of Appeals plus the, the Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia, the capital, D.C. That's 13. They can come and say, you know what, we have to increase the seats on the Supreme Court. That's what packing means. Increase the seats on the Supreme Court from 9 raise it to 13 so each each uh, circuit will have a representative on the Supreme Court or, um, or right now we have justices they say the supervisor justice so and so supervisor for the ninth and the eighth circuit court of appeals for instance and justice so is responsible about this and this we, all the circuit court, court of appeals are supervised by one of the justices but we have 13 circuit court of appeals versus only nine justices 
they can come to us and say, you know what, we're going to make them 13 seats, and now they will have to fill four seats. And if, if they fill four seats plus three, they become seven, and we stay at six. And the conservatives stay at six, and then we go back again to atheism, away from our religions and faiths, and we lose most of our liberties to minor groups. That's the fear. That's why you should go out on November 3rd as a Muslim and vote and vote for Trump Pence ticket. Because you don't want to make those very minor groups to control your lives and those groups actually were created by the Zionism throughout the world. And they inflict them into our societies to dismantle them from within and, and weaken them. The purpose of it, the purpose of those minor groups which become powerful in our in our way of life and they influence everything our justice system influence our our uh, political system and our legislative system we lose we lose a lot then America will go back to square one again right now MAGA means make America great again and he did bring it up to become very great internally. Forget about the world. Now, we are undergoing a house cleaning mission and we have to finish it. And this house cleaning mission is so vital and important in the very existence and the core existence of our great union. We must preserve it. You don't go out to vote and vote for Trump Pence ticket. We will go back to square one again we were where we were at the era of Biden or Obama Biden and then faithless and non-godly things will, will keep inflicted into our society to, to dismantle it and destroy it. So it is a new hand to stop all of this. All the other issues are, they were not even, they were not even answered by both parties, by both uh, debaters, the shaky head or the fly head. The best thing happened last night is the fly which stayed on our Vice President Mike Pence for two minutes and three seconds. It was timed on a stopwatch by someone, I don't know who, but they confirmed it was there for two minutes and three seconds before it even slide, it went a little bit down and then we don't know where did it go. I hope it did not go into his back. <laughs> but that, that was the main event of last night's debate. So who won Darding? Flyhead 8, Shaky Head 1. And one more last note, go, go back to the last question, which was a, an answer to a, an eight years, eight year old nice beautiful uh, student and see the compassion and the love and the unity answer that's why how, how i dub it by our vice president mike pence while immediately the challenger senator kamala harris she immediately went, again because she was on the offensive, she immediately went to scare or try to scare the Americans about division. Now who's, who wants unity and who wants a division? Who wants to inflict fears on us? Well, the answer of Mike Pence was very uh, uniting, very comforting, the response of Kamala Harris was very offensive 
underestimates our, our intelligence as voters and it was defi divisive. It was a thread again to our society and to our unity. That's the way they want to deal with this country to scare the hell out of us. No, we will not succumb to this kind of tactics anymore. And by the way, Senator Harris, thank you for not mentioning the word Israel and thank you for not mentioning the word LGBT, which is the biggest mistake that Hillary Clinton has done in the 2016 debate. So for this one, for this episode, until I see you with another important issue, I'll, I'll be coming out to you throughout October with English episodes to keep you up to date with the election and with the vote uh, and with the, with the polls, which most of them are fake, but I'll give you my own poll, which God's willing will be the right one, inshallah. Until I see you in another English episode, Astaudu'akumullah.